I would now like to cover the process of collecting and remitting sales tax. Generally, the sale of any motor vehicle or trailer is subject to Indiana sales tax or use tax unless such a transaction is exempt under state law. If a motor vehicle or trailer is purchased from a registered Indiana dealer, the dealer must collect Indiana sales tax and provide the purchaser documentation showing the sales tax was paid. And I want to repeat that very important information. The dealer must collect Indiana sales tax and provide the purchaser with documentation stating the sales tax has been paid. When a purchaser claims an exemption, you will need that ST Form 108E that I talked about here just a moment ago. You must also pay or remit the sales tax that you've collected directly to the state through your end time account. And I'm gonna show you how easy that is right now. Sales tax that you've collected. You must have a valid retail merchant certificate. So dealers must collect sales tax when selling a vehicle to an Indiana resident and most out-of-state residents as well. Dealers are also going to remit or pay that sales tax collected. As stated before, any dealer management program that you're using will more than likely compute the sales tax you are charging to a customer in a split second, no matter where they live. But I think it's really important to be able to give a quick quote to a customer on the lot that wants to know what they should expect to pay for a vehicle out the door, including sales tax. I think a very common question from your customer will be, if I agree to this price, what do I have to pay out the door with the sales tax? Any software program you are using would generate that sales tax computation in a split second, but I think it's a good idea to be able to quote a quick estimate to the customer before you are sitting at your desk doing the final paperwork. So let's make this process as easy as possible. Let's say you're selling a vehicle to an Indiana resident for $5,000 with no trade-in. Indiana's sales tax rate is 7%. So we're gonna do some simple math here. You just take the sales price of the vehicle, 5,000, multiply it by 7%, Add that to the amount to the purchase price, and that is what the customer will pay out the door. So you just multiply 5,000 by 7%, which equals 350, add the 350 to the purchase price of 5,000, and you have $5,350. $5,350 is what an Indiana resident pays out the door on a vehicle that's priced at $5,000. Pretty simple, huh? Now let's make it a little more complicated and throw in a trade-in. Let's say we're selling a $5,000 vehicle and we're taking a $2,000 trade-in. You're probably aware, but as a reminder, when a person purchases a vehicle from a licensed motor vehicle dealer in Indiana, they are going to get a trade-in allowance or what is often called as a like-kind trade-in. They're going to get what's known as a trade-in allowance, so they only have to pay sales tax on the difference. So we're going to take the purchase price of the vehicle, subtract the trade-in amount that will equal the taxable amount, then multiply that amount by 7% and add it to the taxable price. So in this scenario, let's say you have sold a vehicle at a price of 5,000 and you're taking a $2,000 trade-in. So you'll take the $5,000, subtract the 2,000 trade-in, which equals a taxable value of 3,000. Then you multiply the 3,000 by the Indiana sales tax rate of 7%, which is gonna equal 210. And then you add the 210 to the taxable price. So the customer is going to pay $3,210 at the door when you sell a $5,000 vehicle and have taken a $2,000 trade-in. Once again, dealer management software should compute this for you with a couple clicks of the mouse. Now, we're going to make things just a little more complicated. I want to show you how to collect sales tax when you're selling a vehicle to a person that lives in another state. In most cases, you will collect sales tax when you are selling a vehicle to an out-of-state resident unless their home state does not charge sales tax on vehicles. And there's only a small handful of states that do not charge sales tax when the, their residents purchase a vehicle. So you are going to charge sales tax in almost every scenario when you're selling a vehicle to someone that lives outside the state of Indiana. It's very important to be aware of the information if you're advertising your vehicles online, which I'm assuming that you will be, but when you're advertising your vehicles online, you could have customers from all over the country coming to purchase a vehicle at your dealership here in Indiana. So in a nutshell, you will charge 7% sales tax to residents of Indiana, unless they are exempt, and you will charge out-of-state purchasers their home state sales tax rate up to 7%. So if the customer's home state sales tax rate is higher than Indiana 7%, you would only charge a maximum of 
Now here you can see all the state sales tax rates that were in effect at the time this video is being recorded. Now I want you to be aware that any of these rates could change at any time. So I'm always going to recommend that you use an updated dealer management software program if you're not sure of current rates, or you can call dealer services, or you can even contact the customer's home state to find out their current sales tax rate. As you can see here, Indiana's sales tax rate is actually higher than most other states. So in most scenarios, when you're selling a vehicle to an out-of-state resident, you will be charging a rate lower than 7%. As you can see here, I believe there are only four states that do not charge sales tax on vehicles. So you will be collecting sales tax on almost every single customer transaction when they live in another state. So let's do another computation here. Let's say we're selling a $5,000 vehicle to a customer that has come down from Michigan to buy a car that they saw that you had advertised on cars.com. So we're gonna take the purchase price of the vehicle, 5,000, and multiply it by the Michigan sales tax rate of 6%, which you would have seen on that previous screen. So you take the 5,000 times 6%, which equals 300. Then you simply add the $300 to the purchase price of 5,000, and the customer pays you $5,300. That's not too complicated, is it? Now let's sell a vehicle to somebody that lives in Alabama. Alabama currently charges 2% sales tax. So if you sell a $5,000 vehicle to an Alabama resident, you will multiply 5,000 by the Alabama sales tax rate of 2%, which would equal $100. Add the $100 to the purchase price and the Alabama resident pays $5,100 out the door. Now let's do another state. Let's say that we are selling a vehicle to a Maryland resident Maryland does not currently charge sales tax on vehicles. So in this scenario, you would not charge sales tax. So if you sell a $5,000 vehicle to a Maryland resident, they would pay $5,000 out the door since Maryland does not currently charge sales tax on motor vehicles. But as stated early, the state could change their sales tax rates at any time after this video was recorded. And remember, you will never charge more than the Indiana sales tax rate of 7%. If the customer lives in a state that charges more than 7%, you would only charge up to 7%. And then the customer would have to pay the difference in sales tax when they register the vehicle in their home state. And on a side, side note, many states will charge their state sales tax rate and a city sales tax rate in addition to the sales tax rate charged on motor vehicles. So it could be a very common scenario for you to charge sales tax on a motor vehicle you sold to an out-of-state resident only to have that resident pay additional sales tax they owe when they register the vehicle in their home state. So here you see if you sell a vehicle to someone that lives in California, the California sales tax rate is 7.25% plus local rates depending on where they live. So you would only charge the maximum Indiana rate of 7% and that customer would pay the additional sales tax they owed when they registered the vehicle they purchased from you in the state of California. Here's a chart that shows out-of-state sales tax rates on trailers and many states do not charge sales tax on trailers, but if you're selling a lot of trailers, you wanna make sure that you are definitely aware of this information. I wanna go more in depth and discuss a trade-in allowance that I have mentioned a couple of times previously in the course. A trade-in allowance applies only to what are known as like-kind exchanges in which the motor vehicle or trailer being traded is owned and titled in the name of the customer and is of like-kind. A like-kind exchange means, you know, a motor vehicle being traded for another motor vehicle or a trailer being traded for a trailer, okay? Now let's just say, for example, that someone trades a motor vehicle for a trailer, that's not a like-kind exchange or somebody trades a boat for a car, that's not a like-kind exchange. Now, a boat can be traded for a car. However, the value of the non-like-kind items do not reduce the taxable selling price. So let's say, for example, you take a boat as trade for a car, it will not reduce the taxable selling price. So if you take a $2,000 boat as trade on a $5,000 car, the customer will still pay sales tax on $5,000 because that's not a like-kind trade. So the vehicle being traded in needs to be of a like-kind of vehicle for the customer to qualify for that trade-in allowance. If you have any questions about current sales tax rates, you can visit the Department of Revenue's website or you can always call dealer services or if you're using any dealer management software program, it should be automatically computed based on the customer's zip code. 
Here's some forms I want to cover with you again. The state of Indiana does require that a person titling a vehicle has indicated that the gross taxes have been paid. So in most scenarios, you'll be using that ST-108, which allows the dealer to indicate the amount of tax collected from the purchaser. And then the dealer will be required to remit that to the state. And I always want to make sure that you do have your dealer numbers correctly and you also your merchant sales numbers correct there at the very top right. Otherwise, ST-108 will be rejected by the license branch and the purchaser might have to come back and get your valid number. So be sure to enter your dealership name and your valid retail merchant certificate numbers and your federal ID number as well. So make sure that you do have those uh, in a correct format, including the three zeros for the end of your merchant certificate, or it could be rejected. Now, here's the other ST-108 that's used when selling vehicles to out-of-state residents and for sales of recreational vehicles and cargo vehicles, uh, cargo trailers as well. So do please uh, keep that in mind. Now, here's the 108E. Remember, this is the scenario where you might be selling a vehicle to a party that's exempt from sales tax, such as a nonprofit or maybe a government entity. So please keep aware of that. And remember, you have to have the purchaser's identification number, uh, you know, some type of social security number, taxpayer number, or FEIN for that form to, quali to qualify. So do please uh, keep that in mind. Any type of sales tax exemption claim is not valid with out the customer providing those required identification numbers. So on the back of that form, you'll be able to see all the organizations that are exempt from paying sales tax. So you can definitely take a look at that. Here's that resale certificate. I want to make sure that you're aware of ST-105D. This form is to be used only by an Indiana automobile auction or an Indiana dealer to reflect sales of motor vehicles, trailers, or watercraft that are sold and are exempt from Indiana sales tax for the purpose of resale. OK, so this form needs to be completed on every vehicle you purchase for resale to explain why you have not paid sales tax. And even if you sell a vehicle to another dealer, whether they're a license in the state of Indiana or another state, this form is going to need to be completed as well. So you always want to make sure you keep all copies of all documents. Any dealer auction that you purchase vehicles from should have this form available every time you purchase a vehicle. But keep in mind, this form needs to be completed regardless if you purchase a vehicle at a dealer auction or purchase a vehicle from an individual. You need to sign that this property is to be purchased and used for resale only. So you'll definitely want to retain copies of this document as well. Now I want to show you how to remit the sales tax you've collected or pay the sales tax that you have collected to the state of Indiana. It's recommended to remit your sales tax every single month. So this is the law in Indiana, it's very clear. If you are licensed in the state of Indiana, you are going to collect sales tax on most motor vehicle sales, and you must pay the sales tax you've collected to the state of Indiana. On a side note, sales tax that you've collected for an out-of-state resident would be paid to the state of Indiana as well. And then the state of Indiana would pay that sales tax to the customer's home state. Same goes true for individuals that live in the state of Indiana. When you purchase a vehicle from a dealer in another state, that dealer is going to collect that sales tax for the state of Indiana. They'll pay it to their state, and then their state pays the sales tax to the state of Indiana. So you're still going to remit sales tax on the same basis, whether you've collected it for an in-state resident or an out-of-state resident. And I want to show you how very simple this process is. If you've never owned a business that collects sales tax, it is very, very easy to collect the sales tax and pay the sales tax you've collected to the state. And I want to show you that process right now. When you are ready to pay or remit the sales tax you've collected for a specific month, you can easily do that through your end time account. Remember, this is where you initially registered to obtain your retail merchant certificate, and that allows you to legally collect sales tax when you're selling vehicles. So when you're ready to remit or pay that sales tax, you're going to go to endtime.dor.in.gov. And if your web browser has cookies activated, your Endtime website should already have your username and password registered. Uh, if not, then you will just enter your username and password. And here you land on your Endtime dashboard, which I showed you a little bit earlier. You're simply going to click on the File Now link, as you see right here. On the next screen, you're going to see a sales tax calculator like you do here. And I want to make this as easy as possible first. So you're going to enter the total amount of the sales you had during the month. So let's say you had a very slow month and you only sold one car for $5,000 and did not take a trade-in. 
I do expect you to sell more than that every month, but I want to keep this training scenario as easy as possible. So you're going to enter 5,000 into the total sales box at the top, and then 5,000 will automatically populate the taxable sales box. Then the 350 would automatically populate as you see here. This calculator multiplied your total sales by 7%. Now I want you to be aware the state of Indiana will incentivize you to pay your sales tax early or on time with a very small discount. So even though you collected 7% on your sales tax, you get a small discount when you're filing earlier on time. So you'll actually pay the state a little smaller amount than the amount that you collected from the customer. This small discount actually makes it profitable to pay the sales tax you owe early or on time. So as you see here on the screen, if you sold one vehicle in the month for $5,000 with no trade on time, your discount would be in, in effect and you'd only pay the state $347.44. That's the amount that's going to be paid when you're paying on time. Now, let's throw in a trade-in. Let's say we sold one car this month for $5,000 and took a $2,000 trade-in. So you're going to enter the $5,000 in the total sales box. Then you enter the $2,000 in the exemptions deduction box. The taxable sales will automatically populate. And with your one-time discount, as you see at the bottom of your screen, you would pay the state $208.47 on this transaction. And this could not be easier to compute your sales tax that you're going to pay to the state on the vehicles that you've sold. Pretty easy, huh? Now let's take the price up here a little bit. Let's say you sold one vehicle for $10,000 with no trade-ins or exemptions. At the bottom of the screen, you would pay the discounted rate of $694.89. Now, let's say you sold one vehicle for $10,000 and you took a $4,000 trade-in. Then you'll enter $10,000 in the total sales box and $4,000 in the exemptions deduction box. And at the bottom of the screen, you would, when you're filing on time or early, you'll pay $416.94. Now, let's go ahead and increase that sales volume. Let's say you sold 10 vehicles in a month for $10,000 a piece with no trades. So you're going to enter $100,000, that's obviously 10 vehicles at $10,000 a piece, and you would need to pay the state $6,948.90 with your on-time discounts. And finally, one more transaction. Let's say we sold $100,000 worth of vehicles and we've taken $30,000 in trades. So you would enter the $100,000 in the total sales, $30,000 in trades in the exemption deductions box, your taxable sales would be 70,000. That is 100,000 minus 70,000 of trade-ins. And at the bottom of the screen, you would pay the state $4,864.23. Are you seeing how easy the sales tax calculator works? So now after you have computed the sales tax that you owe and must pay the state, you're gonna choose your payment method on the next screen. You can have that amount deducted from your bank account and you will be, not be charged any fees or you can pay that amount with a credit card and you'll need to pay a small service charge when you're paying with a credit card. Or if you're not able to pay right now, you can make arrangements to make payments later. I would never recommend that method. I recommend setting aside the sales tax you've collected in a special savings or checking account that you never touch so you can easily pay the sales tax you've collected every month. You never want to spend the sales tax you collect. Always set aside the sales tax you collect so you can pay it to the state when it's due. So you're going to select your payment method. And on the screen here, you're going to see the charges that you pay if you are using credit cards. And the percentages can add up when you are paying a large amount of sales tax. So if you can have the amount deducted directly from your bank account instead of using a credit card, you're definitely going to save some money. And I strongly encourage you to do that if possible. Then you're going to confirm uh, the submission. You'll get a submission confirmation. And if you're paying with credit card, you just enter your credit card information here and then confirm the payment. And then you receive a confirmation like you see right here. And you want to make sure and print a copy and save a copy on your computer and always have proof that you paid the sales tax that you have collected to the state. Now let's talk about filing dates. It's very important to know your filing dates. The 20th of the month is the day that you must file when you're averaging more than $1,000 per month in sales tax. Now, I'm assuming that you, on a regular basis, will be collecting more than $1,000 in sales tax every month because you are a very large sales tax generator for the state because 
the sales tax that you charge tends to be a lot higher. So if you're averaging more than $1,000 per month in sales tax, you have to file your sales tax returns before the 20th of the month. Now, if you're averaging less than $1,000 per month, then you can actually pay it before the 30th. But since you're a large sales tax collector, think about it, most of the vehicles you sell will be sold for several thousands of dollars, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars. So you will normally be collecting more than $1,000 in sales tax every month. So you wanna pay the sales tax you've collected before the 20th of the month, following the month the sales tax was collected. So if you're remitting all the sales tax you collected during the month of June, the sales tax is due on or before the 20th of July. If you're remitting all the sales tax you've collected in the month of July, the sales tax must be paid before the 20th of August. See how that works? If you're paying all the sales tax you collected in August, the sales tax must be paid before September 20th. If the 20th of the month ever falls on a weekend, you are allowed to remit the, sack, the sales tax on the following Monday. I want to encourage you to pay the sales tax you've collected on the first day of every month so you'll never go past the 20th of the month deadline. You might set up a Google or Apple Calendar reminder on the first day of every month to give you that reminder. Dealers must file monthly. Most dealers are going to file before the 20th of the month. Low volume dealers might be able to file before the 30th of the month, but I always want to remind you, just get in the habit of filing on the first day of every month. If for some reason you forget to remit your taxes, you're gonna receive some friendly reminders from the state known as fines. If you are a perennial non-payer, your retail merchant certificate can be revoked. If you do not have a retail merchant certificate, you cannot have a dealer's license. So paying the sales tax you collected to the state is part of the gig. Be sure to pay sales tax that you've collected to the state in a very timely manner. If you ever have any questions about sales tax, you can actually call the Department of Revenue they have a customer service line for you, 317-232-2240. Uh, you can also send secure messages to customer service through your end time account. If you want to review this information, you can go to indiana.dealerslicense.com. Once again, that's indiana.dealerslicense.com. Click on the videos link, and then you can scroll right down there and click on the video titled how dealers collect sales tax. Remember, when you're logged on during a learning management system, you can't fast forward, but when you want to review any information, go to indiana.dealerslicense.com, click on the videos link, and you can easily review the information that we're covering here. And at that time, you'll easily be able to fast forward to the information that you want to review. I hope this information is helpful.